Hey guys, <laughs> Basil and Wolf from Grayson Hobby, and today we have a new product from Jumper. Yeah, so what Jumper's done, they've added, um, they're starting to add receivers to their lineup. Now they got the radio, a couple receivers out. You got the R8, the R1 Plus. Um, now the next step here is the R1F. The R1F is an F port variation of the R1 Plus. So it's less wires, uh, Lewis grip capability, RSI straight to the OSD, etc., without having to do some extra work. And the price is the same. So in this video, we're gonna go over the R1. We're gonna unbox, really unbox it, unwrap it. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna open it. <laughs> gonna show you what it comes with. We're gonna go over how to solder it up. And for bonus, we're gonna solder it up to a Mamba flight stack. Yeah, so basically we're gonna show you guys an example of how to set it up on something like the R349. We're gonna use using that flight controller. Yep. But better yet, we go into beta flight and show you that what you need to do and the commands you need to do it and all the information we talk about, the links will be below. So you don't have to put the same questions over and over in the comments. Yes. So this will get you going, guys. Yes. All right, guys, like always, if this video is value to you, be sure to give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel, and be sure to check out um, the ever-growing accessories for the jumper radio, the switches, the gimbals, the pads, the receivers, and the antennas, and everything else oh at graceandhobby.com slash jumper has everything you need. So all of our jumper equipment, uh, parts, and accessories ship right here from our Atlanta, Georgia location. Um, if you guys are in the Atlanta area, come on by, check it out. Uh, we have jumpers in stock as much as we can. <laughs> yep. New product, Will. What we got? Yeah, so today we got the R1F from Jumper. So Jumper's expanding the line to even more receivers. This is a drone uh, beta flight style flight controller or receiver. Um, so what they've done is taken the R1 that has the S bus um, smart port, RSI, VCC, and ground. They've done away with that and simplified it to F port, positive and ground. So it's a five volt positive ground and F port out. So F port is a bi-directional. Basically it combines S bus and smart port together in order to minimize the number of wires. So instead of a four wire connection, you got three wire. It also frees up a UART port so you can run um, extra ex accessories on your flight controller. The like GPS, or in, two cameras. Yeah, or like in that. the case that you, some of these flight controllers are very minimalistic now um, where they have reduced ports on them to minimize space if you got little 16 by 16 stacks something like that um so it gives you the ability to get extra features of smart port lewis grip stuff like that without the extra wiring and with having less uart ports physically on the flight controller all right all right so i get the r1 plus i get the r1f but who's the r1f for and was it buying me anything you know what? it's literally for guys with this the flight controllers that don't have a lot of uart ports or if example you, you have an example if you're going to solder up a flight uh receiver and you have an f port you might as well use it because okay. it's already flashed on it's not like you're having a flash firmware on a regular receiver okay um you don't have the extra plugs because that little plug on the uh r1 plus mm -hmm. sometimes on some of these micro quads it gets tall yeah. i mean yeah this is smaller than the Spectrum Satellite. It's basically like a D-pin version. It's a little bit wider than an XM Plus. So it fits in a lot of these micro quads yeah. and it's a nice little compact size. Okay, so the, um, is this the future where all receivers are going or just a different variation? Um, I like to solder my connections a lot okay. um, on my builds. So chances are, if it's a build that where the receiver, it's not like I'm having to take a part off to get to anything like that, I'd probably just use the R1F. If I'm using uh, some of the quads that have a canopy and stuff like that, or the more modular, oh, okay. stuff, that's when I'd use the plug connection. Okay. Um, so it's not one size fits all, like everything. So no, it's, every, another, it's another it's another option. option. That's yes. the nice thing about Jumper. Um, they're starting to give you options from the ground up, multi-module, uh, tons of switches, tons of modes, OpenTX. Yep. Um, now they're receivers, they're yep. following suit. They're gonna start offering many receivers. Yes. Um, so hopefully more exciting things to come from Jumper. So let's take a look real quick. So what do we have here? Where's the, what does the package come with? So the package is literally, the floating around inside here. <laughs> um, the package is literally the shrink tube and the receiver itself. So just let so, you know that's gonna be like the tenth one we open today. So yeah, we just I don't <laughs> even know where. Yeah. Um, so you'll see the how you know okay. R1 Plus. So it's a pretty new design. Um, they date them stuff like that, which doesn't really matter. It's more like a batch date. So they yeah. they probably have thousands of those of the date. Um, so R1F is the model number. Okay, so it comes with, I see right there, it comes with shrink yeah. tubing. So the shrink tubing goes on, and I have one heel that, the shrink tube actually shrinks pretty nice. Um, it's the right length for it, 
and you just shrink it over there. Right. You will have to solder with this one. This is not a plug-in connection, so this is soldering. Right, let's get it with that later. So it comes with basically the receiver and the shrink. All right, so uh, what antennas do I have on there? So this guy has a the UFL or IPX connector, IPX connector. Instead of being soldered on like a lot of cheaper receivers, they're easy to remove. Nice, I like so that. So if you ever chop them up in your you know props and all that, you can replace them. No, um, people chop up props. Granted, at the price of this receiver, I don't know like what the antennas are going to go for, but hopefully they'll be cheap, like a dollar or something like that. Yeah. Um, so you'll be able to change those out. And they're the nicer connectors, guys. That's the one thing I hate, those little tiny ones on the Free Sky receivers. They always pop off. They always get loose unless you shrink them or put a little blob of glue or something on them. Um, these have the nicer, larger connectors that clip on and hold very well. They rotate very well as well. So you okay. can, you know, depending on your build, you can change oh, it out, cool. do whatever okay. you want. Now, um, I know you can shrink wrap them in there, but can you put any glue, hot glue, or anything like that? Yeah, something like this is a non-conductive glue. It would be fine. A okay. um, little blob of hot glue. I've... A lot of times I'll put a little blob of hot glue inside and then I'll shrink tube over it okay. and it'll melt the hot glue on gotcha. and it keeps it nice and secure. So as long as it's non-conductive, right? Yeah, you don't want anything conductive. Right. So I notice, let's do a side comparison with the old R1 there while we have it. So the R1, I'm going to turn these upside down so it's a little easier okay. to see. But it's basically the same receiver. The difference is the added chip for the, the S-Bus pads and all that. Okay. And the biggest physical difference I see is one has a plug. One has a plug connector and the other one, one soldered. doesn't. So how do we solder it up? So to solder it up, you have three wires. Okay. You have you have positive here. You have F port in the middle. And you'll see that's pre-tack solder there. And then you have ground on the end. So closest to the bind button is over here. So in order to know it, the ground, it is labeled, but if you can't see it very well, the ground goes on the side with the button. The plaza on the other and F port's in the middle. Okay. So they did that so it's a little less likely to be able to solder bridge and short it. Gotcha. Kind of but as far as setting up, on this particular one, it does solder to. This right. is an F4 so this Mamba. Is a Mamba. One of this our, is a Mamba Mini Mark II. Best selling bike controllers here. So, this is a nice 20 by 20 stack. Again, it's one of the ones that has not quite so many UART ports, etc. Okay. Um, but you'll do your S bus for your, your F port, which is in the middle. We'll solder to your S bus. Right, well, let's follow the line here. So, the middle one is the yellow. Yes. Now it's going to go all the way to, to S bus. S bus. Okay. You'll have the positive, positive. to your 5 volt. To the 5 volt. And ground to ground. Ground to ground. That's easy enough. So basically, the only way we have to really worry about is that yellow one. That's the signal. That's your signal. That but goes from which one again? Middle? F port. F port to, to S, -bus. S bus. And that's because it's F4. If you have F3, um, there's other ports and all that. Okay. Um, you can use just pretty much any. That number. kind of doesn't make sense. So S bus, F port to S bus. There we yes. go. Yes. Okay. Now, keep in mind when you do this, you if you're using F port receiver, you do need to change some settings in Betaflight. All right, so what do you got here? All right, so I have the Mommy, <laughs> I have the Mamba Mini Mark II flight controller set up here, connected to Betaflight. Uh, I have my receiver set up. I'm gonna go ahead and um, do the configuration and bind it and go from there. Okay. So with this particular one, reading the articles online, F4 flight controllers need a specific way of setup. Okay. So the All first right. thing I'm gonna do yep. is ports. I have my UART port up, set up for serial RX. Wait, this is the Mamba stack. This now. is the Mamba stack. Okay. You're, depending on what flight controller, it might yeah. be different. But in this case, the serial part, you're going to assign the serial port. Then you're going to go to configuration. You're going to go, you're going to change the receiver type to F port there. Okay. Then you got to scroll down a little more and turn on your telemetry. Okay. Then you're going to save and reboot. It's still floating there. All right, so save and reboot. Um, now you go to receiver and then oh, go to CLI. Mm -hmm. Actually, you know what? Let's sh show you guys what would happen okay. first, actually. Okay, so now I got there. I'm going to go ahead and bind up the receiver now. Okay. And plug it in. I'm going to just use the switch here. So it's easier to bind. Okay. So push and hold the button. Turn it on. Bind you button. got the red light and green light on. That's in bind mode. Okay. It's hard to see that red light, but it's there. Trust me. Then we're going to go into the jumper. I'm going to go to multi free sky D16. And if you have a different radio, but D16. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to. Move your hand so I can see the. There you go. All right. We're going to bind it. And I actually do need to update my module. Hey, look at that. Um, so I'm going to go to bind. There we go. Yep. Binding there, you get the red light flashing. That's saying it's binding. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and cancel that by hitting the return button. Okay. 
and then I'm going to power cycle the receiver. Now, the USB doesn't provide power to the, the receiver on this one, so I can just power the cycle the battery. And now we got there. Let's connect it. We okay. got the solid green light saying it's bound. And if you're in the module, in the case of the jumper, which I'm imagining you probably already have a jumper. If you haven't, I don't know where you guys Who are you? rock you're under. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, oh. all right. So you'll see here. I got RSI displaying there. Um, which, oh wow, it's pretty cool. So yeah, I'm the RSSI on, the, on the yeah. Well, that's this is a just like the XSR. Okay. But the difference is like the XSR or the jumper R1. The way they're set up is you have to do assign a channel and back feed for telemetry to get RSSI to display on your OSD. F port automatically displays um, once you get it set up. We bound the receiver. The flight controller is set up for F port. But if you guys look, we still don't have communication here. Okay. But how do we know what's down correctly? How do you know you're not joshing me? We got receiver link here. Okay. We'll turn the radio. Right? The radio. Oh. Receiver still connected. So we're going to cancel that. But you can see the RSSI. Well, you can unplug it, right? If you turn it off. Telemetry lost. So it is bound. But yes. You just don't have any communication. Like you just said. Yeah, the red light, the, or I'm sorry, the green light indicates it's bound. All right, so they're just, just um, proof in the pudding there. It's bound, but not communicating. Yeah. So what's the magic code? So what we need to do in this case, because it's an F4, but the serial half duplex has to be off and the serial RX inverted has to be on in this particular one. Uh, we'll put this little command line for you guys if you're doing the mama stack at the bottom of the video. But just I'm going to copy this here because I don't feel like typing it. And we're going to go to CLI. And we're going to paste it. And then we're going to hit enter. Uh, just put all this data in. Reset. Now we're going to go back to the receiver. And you'll see communication. Wow. That's now, it. Another thing you'll see here is the RSSI is displaying. Now this I haven't calibrated the um, receiver mm -hmm. on this one yet. So it's probably reading a little low. But um, you'll see that's there mm -hmm. in there. Okay. Um, now that is basically your basic setup. Uh, if you want to do Lewis scripts, you do need to download the Lewis scripts and all that um, for the OpenTX Lewis scripts. That's a whole links and all that different stuff. Um, and that way you'll be able to do like VTX adjustments and all that. This controller is not flat, set up for anything, so there's really no point. Okay. Um, but you'll be able to do like PIDs and stuff like that, ideally with Lewis scripts. Through the controller. The yeah. On the controller. But you have to set that up. That's a yeah. whole another thing. That's a whole other thing. The biggest thing that I think this is nice for. One, less wiring. Two, you don't have the bulky connector on it because I personally want the smaller builds. Like if you're doing the, like the R349s on it, there's not a lot of room in there. Then the R1's a tight fit, whereas this one's going to be a little more uh, roomy because you don't have that connector on it. A lot of people will end up cutting the connectors off. So might as well do this. Um, this particular flight controller is the one that's used in the 349. That's why I use this for the video. Okay. Um, Dyton 349? Yeah, Dyton R349. Yeah. Um, and right. that's that right there it? will set it up and you'll have RSSI straight to the OSD system and all that so you don't have to do all the BS work backtracking and setting it through an extra channel on the radio, etc. Um, so basically that's what I would get it for. If you want to do more from there, go for it. I usually just use my OSD to set up. But lightweight receiver, they're dirt cheap, less wiring, and it's kind of a win-win. So that's it. Yep, so at the end of the day, it's another receiver for your multi-rotor drone. Yep. Um, and at just 10 bucks, if you buy a few of them or more, it's a smoking deal. Yeah, I mean, this is a really nice small, comes with a shrink tube, unlike Free Sky receivers. Um, it's a nice compact little uh, receiver. They'll work on your quads. Yep. Um, and it happens to use F port, so it's better for like Lewis scripting and all that. Yes, there you go.